Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. In this one, we are going to introduce a brand new tool in Autodesk Maya 2022 sweep mesh tool. Now the sweep mesh allows you to generate an editable mesh from the length of a curve that you already have in your scene. You can model a variety of objects such as tube, pipe, ribbon, cables, all the way to flat surfaces such as roads or even horns or hair cards. To locate sweep mesh tool, you need to make sure you're in modeling under create you have sweep mesh tool. There is no option box in here. This tool is intended to replace some of the tools that we can find under surface and curves menu set. For example, if I go to surface extrude option box, basically you can create 100% clear about what you wanna create. There are still something that may go wrong and I always have difficulty explaining that to my students. So I'm actually quite excited to have this sweep mesh tool, which can completely replace the old surface extrude tool. Now you can see in my scene, I've got the whole scene in a group, all the NURBS curves in a separate group, and I've got my lights in a, another group. It's always good practice to stay organized. I even, if I go to the channel box and display layer, I put them all on a display layer so I can turn on and off the geometries without selecting the curves. Let's put that in the simplest example possible, creating cables out of curves. You won't believe how simple this is. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to start with just one of these cables. Let's say the first one. With the curve selected, I'm gonna to go to Create, Sweep, Mesh. Now, as soon as you click on it, you'd be like, hold on, what is this? It may look a little bit chunky, a little bit low resolution, but there's nothing to worry about. That's why we have this Sweep Mesh Creator one node in our attribute editor. So basically, the first thing that I'll think about is what sort of profile am I looking for? Do I want a cylindrical or do I want something rectangular? Do I want a flat surface or a wavy surface? And that's why we have these sweep profiles available to you. Since that's a cable, then I will go with circular profile. Now after that, then you need to think about, all right, how many sides do you need to have? And this will add to the resolution of the pipe. The default is eight. I can even lower it down to six and it's going to be all good. Now, one thing that I would check right after this is not distribution or alignment, but rather transformation. So I'm going to go to scale profile and just reduce that ever so slightly so I get a realistic looking thickness for my cable. Something like that. I can even reduce it furthermore to something like 0.05 in my case. But still the curve or the cable rather looks very low resolution and chunky. That's no problem at all. That's why if you scroll down in interpolation, when set the mode to precision, you can increase the precision and that acts as your resolution. Look at that, in no time, I'm getting something that I really like. Usually precision set to 100 is a little bit of an auricula. I will go and set it down to probably 99%, even 98% should give me a good result. Now, if you feel like, okay, I don't need some of these extra loops around my model, something that you always get with surface extrude method, you can just click on this optimize button and Maya is going to optimize the curve without having an impact on the silhouette or the flow of the curve very, very useful. So look at that. In no time, we are getting a really good looking cable. I think this is still a little bit too thick for my taste. So I'm just going to reduce it to 0 0.035. And I think that looks good already. You can select multiple 
curves and assign one sweep mesh node to it. So I'm going to select all three, go to create, sweep mesh, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reduce this slide to six. I'm going to reduce the set profile to 0 0.035 and increase my precision to 98%. And look at that, in no time, I have produced all the cables for this bit right here. But of course, you can do more than that. For example, I'm going to select another one, press F to zoom on it, and you can um, select create with the curve selected, go sweep mesh, and then reduce this. I can turn off my lighting so you can see what's going on exactly. So that's the mesh that we have. I'm going to go in here, reduce the profile, increase the precision to get something that I really like. You can even enable optimize. I can bring this down to something like 0 0.03. But you can make use of distribution to even multiply the number of cables that you have. For example, scale profile to something like 0 0.01. I can go ahead and add to my number of instances and they're not copies, they're instances. And the good thing about instance is, I'm sure you know it, it's not going to create or generate an extra shape node which is fantastic. So with that, I'm going to go and just change the coverage and you can see changing the coverage, if I zoom closely, changing the coverage can actually reposition this to a circular pattern. With that, I can go under transformation and twist these cables. How cool is that? I can even increase my resolution here and increase my sides to a higher value if you think they're breaking up, the cables are breaking up. I can even get rid of the optimize and get a much higher resolution result. You can see how organic this looks and creating this again out of a surface extrude can take a very long time. You can play around with that, make it a bit looser or neater. You can, it, it's totally up to you. And at any point of time, you can go and tweak all of these values. You can even overwrite the twist and go something up to five and get more twist for your cables. Remember, keep that in mind, all of these attributes are keyable. So you can even create animation for any attribute that you want. I'm gonna go all the way back since I'm very happy with this. Bring my lighting setup back and go into this part where I use a different profile. So I just wanna create a very flat ring for these barrels. So I'm just gonna go under create and sweep mesh, but this time I'm going to use rectangle. Obviously, the height is too high, the resolution or precision is too low, so something like 99%. I'm going to scroll up, change the height, change the width a little bit. Now, here's one attribute that I really like when I select rectangular profile, and that is corner radius, which is your bevel. Look at that. I'm just going to get a really neat looking bevel and that allows me to even make the surface thinner. I'm going to reduce the bevel to something like 0 0.05 for this model will work just fine. I can just reduce this all the way down to get something that I like. Again, I'm using now this as my modeling tool. How cool is that? Once you're happy with it, you can actually duplicate your model you can go to modify, center your pivot, and just move this forward, and that adds to your model. Now for the base, I have another one ready to go. And for the base, I am going to use rectangular again, so sweep mesh, rectangle, and changing it to rectangle. Now I can change the width to something like 3.6, and height to something like eight, to give me something like this, um, with a little bit of uh, bevel actually, so 0 0.09, very tight bevel is something that I'm looking for. But now in here, I can actually distribute. 
and create instances. I'm just gonna have three instances. I'm going to um, probably keep the scale instances the way that I want, and I can rotate them. So I'm gonna go and probably rotate that uh, and you can see once you rotate it, you can get really interesting result. And again, think about how cool would that be if you were to animate it. And I'm gonna change the coverage and that is gonna give you sort of a, the platform that you want. I can go all the way down and change some of these attributes too. For example, with rotate, I can actually create a really nice looking sort of platform in here. You can align that to the original mesh that you selected and that kind of, you um, can see, align outer from the original mesh to the sender and sort of top, bottom, and even right. So these are really, really handy and useful um, alignment tools. Just gonna keep it at the center for now. And with that, Look at that, I just created a platform out of this sweep tool. Now I can even add to the details. I can shift right click, go to extrude, keep faces together off and just scale those faces ever so slightly, pressing G to repeat the, um, the last tool and just push them down. And see how a combination of different tools with the help of this sweep mesh tool, you can create all sorts of crazy stuff in no time at all. These two are still there, so I can go and select these two curves, go into create, sweep mesh, and now you know how this works. Now you know how this works. You know that you need to reduce this profile to a low value, go into precision and crank it up, and there you have my curves. So this is a really brief, quick example on how you can use sweep mesh tool to your advantage and expedite and improve the workflow that you have modeling workflow and just add to your model in almost no time at all. I'm very excited about this new modeling addition to Maya's modeling tool set. And I hope you guys found this video also useful. All right, until the next video, See you guys soon.